Brothers. Of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1 927 6648. Now, Basil Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman here on this uh, Tuesday, the 19th of September. Downtown 145 at 34,479. Let me just go back to this. Oh, I haven't got it. Let me just put it in right now. It's just been a very busy morning. I had a Zoom meeting up until just before my show. So now I'm trying to catch up to everything. Uh, let's go to right there. So you remember, I made a big deal for months, weeks and weeks and weeks. Now it's going on for months about the 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 indicator of last resort, that is the 914 moving average. So crossover, that is. So within that context, what have we got? Right as we are looking at the charts at this particular moment, uh, I'm looking at, oh, come on, what's going on? A little slow there, huh? A little slow there, huh? Maybe it'll hear me. There it is. So what we're looking at here is, this is the Dow. We waited and waited and waited for the for the green to go pink, meaning negative on the 914 crossover. We used this peak right here on August the 1st using a different indicator in the chap wave. Um, this is the conglomerate, the overall umbrella that I use as the chap wave methodology. Um, we used a particular indicator to get us that exact high on August the 1st to go short the Dow. <clears throat> but we had to wait and wait and wait to confirm that there was a sell signal to a sell mode by this pink nine period moving indicator. And what happened was just for one day, there was this big pop up the other day. And I said, I think that's temporary. We stay short. And look what happened. It went pink yesterday and today it's pink again. So within, the, within that context, look what we've got for the first time and the day is young. I mean, not even an hour into session, 37 minutes or something like that. And what have we got? We've got a pink nine-period moving average in the S&P. That means that I'll switch between each one. So this is the white background. Here's the white background with the daily, week, daily weekly, monthly charts. And look at this, S&P arching over, went pink. Day's young. It could change back to green again. But in the meantime, that weekly chart is so important. Look at this. The vertical line from this mid-July high at about 40, what is it, 40, was that 46,000? Uh, I should have put that in. I was at 46,002 or something crazy like that. 46,007.07. .07. When we went to the recovery high, uh, at 4507 on the 27th of July. Look, here's the weekly chart. Look how weak the MACD was. Look at the stochastic. The on-balance volume, even though it was positive, was way under the previous one. But the determination of this, the term, de determination, yep, the determination of this 9 pre moving average in the weekly chart still hasn't got even close to being negative. So, as I've said before, it's going to be, You've got your little rudder. You've got your little your little speedboat that makes the quick turns. Then you've got your uh, your uh, bay cruise ship that goes around the bay that makes turns, but not that quickly. And then you've got your super tanker. That's the monthly chart. So this just says it's taking a while for this intermediate term, the weekly chart, to cross negative. I don't even know if it will. But in the meantime, we have to use the daily. And the daily says... Down 21 at 44.32, the deeper it goes down today, and the day's young, we can still have a pretty decent bounce. We're going to be watching the distance, the aperture between the 9 and the 14 pre moving average and the daily chart. Look at this. Oops, I didn't want to go there. That's the intraday. That's the intraday. Look at this. Yeah. You've got the S&P just turning pink. You've got the QQQ. Just turning pink as we speak, down three at 367.67. So that just says 
you've got an arch formation occurring right here in the daily chart. This is the daily chart. This is the QQQ. The gray line is the uh, intraday action of the uh, QQQs. Nine is the nine period exponential moving average, 14 period moving average. And it just crossed negative. Day is young, but so far it's rolling over. And you can see it right here in the daily. But look at the weekly. Look at this, the daily chart, just making a rather large H to M pattern. And you've got a potential. I'm going to draw these in now because I like to be ahead of the game. And that just says there's a chance that you're going to get a lowercase h. But if you take too much time, you're going to hold steady here and you're going to have a successful test of the left side low. Um, in this case, that's the low of, that's not 43.35. That is the low of 43.35.31 in the, uh, in the oh, I'm still looking at the S&P. All right, we're real live, folks. Uh, Basil Chapman here. That was a pre-recorded show from earlier this morning. I uh, just uh, pinch hitting right here. This is usually where I do an interview with Tom O'Brien. Let's just run all these numbers. I'm going to go through the Dow as it stands right now. This is live at 3.12 p.m. in the afternoon. We like to do live shows here. Uh, Dow Industrials, Dow 161. So let me go through this one at a time. So you've got the chat wave inside track repellent zone. You see this green line, this little mini channel right here, down channel, diagonal channel, and the pink line. Well, not only did we get repelled from this line, I call it the inside track repellent zone on the way uh, if you're trying to rally, break to the upside. And if you go above, then it becomes a support line. But here's the most important thing that I was talking about, and I spoke about this when we were a half an hour into the session this morning. I said, Ha, huh, look at this. I call it the indicator of last resort because it's the one that really waits and waits and waits to confirm things. And lo and behold, look at this. The nine period moving average below the 14 period moving average again just says that the, the buying pressure isn't strong enough until you can get that green. And with the price really in the th down in the 35,050 to 35,100 area, the uh, S&P. It's the same thing, and we've gone uh, all the way from nine, nine from ten o'clock this morning until right here at three, just after three. And here's the S and P. You see the S. This is the nine period moving average below the fourteen period moving average, saying this H pattern is viable, and that we could be going down for another couple of days. Maybe the Fed's going to say something. I I'm not sure about that because the Fed is kind of stuck. You know, we've had some very good. Even if you're looking at the uh, Housing sector, there are still some parts where the housing sector is still good. Look at this. The nine, this is the 9 under the 14 in the QQQ. It went pink. That doesn't mean, oh, it goes pink. That's the end of the It means that right now it's gone back to that selling pressure. And that's what we're looking at. Look at the IWM. So the QQQ down $1.68 at 368.98. Here's the uh, IWM. Down 67 cents at 181.72. On that big rally back at the very first of September, the pink remained pink. The nine period moving could not go above the 14 to go green and it deflected lower. Let's look at gold. Gold is trying to rally, it's got to move above the nine, but the nine hasn't turned green. It is so close. The gold is unchanged right here at 1952. This is the continuous contract. Look at the silver contract. SI, this is the silver contract. What do we have? We have the uh, pink. It's much stronger in the negative action in the daily chart via the 914 than the gold. And it's saying, and now I go just live to this on this chart. Yeah, you can see the, um, you can see the, Gold and silver. I'll do the silver. This is the daily on the left. This is the weekly in the middle. And the monthly on the right. Let's go from the right. This is the monthly. And it just says it's stuck in a trading. It's not negative. It's just not positive. It's just stuck. Stuck in a trading band. Look at the weekly chart, how this orange nine-period exponential moving average. This is the 200-period exponential moving average. It's like a magnet. It can't break and hold away from it. So that says even if it pulls back, it should come and retest that. So it says stuck in a range, and you can see this inverted V-shaped pattern. And the chapter where if we go to a D, D's where other things can happen, where you can get your deeper sell-off. 
That's a peak D in July. <clears throat> Pulls back sharply to the 20, low 22 area. Spikes up to 25. Peak D, long-legged doji candle, comes all the way down and just briefly takes out the left side low. So silver struggling. If you look at high-grade copper, high-grade copper, sideways action, making the pattern that I call the lowercase h to a lowercase m. In this case, it's just the h formation. There was a much bigger one right here. And like an inverted V, but it's basically going from one point to see that up arrow, the little yellow circle, to this particular low right here. There's your first arch. There's your second arch, a little, a little uh, stop dead at the 200 period moving average in high grade copper. Look at crude oil. I mean, this is what is the Fed going to do <clears throat> when you've got crude oil? Going almost to today's high is 92.43. Just have a look at this. This is the weekly chart. I'm stretching it out. Here it goes. Whoops. Look at this cup from beautiful cup formation. And 92.81 was the high that was made back in, I think it was in October, November. I think it was the last week of October. No, the second week of, of November. 92.81, continuous contract, comes down for a double bottom comes right back. This is called the Chapman Wave Inside Wedge Target Repellent Line. It breaks, a, just stops dead last week. This week it goes above it. The week's early. We're not even, we're just two days into the week. And it's testing the 9281 area by going where? Through 9243. We've seen so many of these double tops and double bottoms. Talk about double bottom. Have a look at this. The TLT. And this is the bond. So now Fed's coming up with Fed speak tomorrow. With the momentum of the yields pushing higher and the momentum of the bonds, this is the iShares 20-year Treasury bond ETF. Now, the bond ETF basically is… Um, now, toll free at oh, one eight seven. Got a break. I'll be back. Adding stock options to your portfolio can be a major game changer, but the full complexities of these instruments can oftentimes elude even the most experienced traders. Whether you're a seasoned trader looking to sharpen your knowledge on options or you're completely new to the market, Teddy Kekstat is here to help. On Wednesday, September 27th from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time, Teddy is hosting a live stream that will teach you how to capitalize on time with calendar stock option spreads. Teddy will also go over how to trade stocks and other market movements without large capital allocation, how to expand portfolio diversification, how to maximize potential returns, basic entry and exit techniques, and more. If that wasn't enough of a reason to attend, Teddy will also be answering all questions live. If you're serious about making money in this market, head over to the front page of TFNN.com today to sign up for Teddy's live stream. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, folks. So just let me show this. I had a couple of questions uh, since I'm doing this live right here. This is normally when I would do my interview with Tom. Uh, let me just make it as simple as possible. Um, using the techniques that I've just uh, an announced a few moments ago, um, the, the TLT has made this cup formation, and it's really imperative. It's right at this moment in the 92s where this is where you could see a bounce. And I'm not sure a big reversal, but at least a bounce away from the lows in the TLT. It's absolutely imperative. Look at this. We've got many patterns of this dreaded H pattern, the one where it comes straight down, rallies, fails at a peak B, takes out the left side low and goes low. It's done this over and over. This one did go to a C. That implies that there are times where if you go not to a B, but to the third or fourth highest peak and then arch over that you've used up internal energy as well as to weakness so that you've kind of ameliorated all, all the other aspects and that means you can try to make a cushion, a kind of not a trampoline bounce, but at least some kind of a, a support level just under the left side low. In this case, 92.23. So my suspicion is even if we get down to the 91.50s or the low 91s, there could be – we're ready for a bounce in the TLT. If you look at the TBT, uh, TBT has gone to almost to the left side high of 36.44. We're just a couple of cents away. 36.09 is the high today. It was a little higher yesterday. So that could bounce a little bit more. But this is the yields. This is the ultra short limit, 20 year treasury bond yield. And if you look at the TNX, there we go, the TNX. Mm -mm. That has gone. Uh, today's high is 43.65. 43.62 was the last high. And this is peak A, peak B. Maybe it's a C. Maybe it's an alternate count. But most importantly, this is exactly the area where if there is a close above this left side high that was made on uh, August the 22nd of 43.62, there is a close two out of three sessions above that. And look what we've got. We've got a potential peak C in the TNX. That's the 10-year Treasury yield. Look at the cup formation in the weekly. That's a, that's a pretty powerful move. But the MACD saw just stall. The stochastic's under 80% in the in the weekly, monthly. But the, the weekly chart is still 86% in the stochastic. That's good. MACD here is MACD strong. Nine is way over the 40. That's just suggesting that the yields could go higher. You've got to, You cannot rule out higher yields. Most importantly, if you put this together with the DXY, which is the dollar, the dollar at this particular po moment is trading. Mm -mm. Wait, 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 what's going on? Why is it not going to the dollar? Dollar DXY. There it is. Click, and there it is. Yeah, the dollar is very. It's the same sort of thing. Getting a little bit overbought. The technicals are still very strong. Um, I have to use the UUP because that's got volume in it. And the volume in the UUP, that's the power shares dollar bull. We've been long this since 2018. Um, in the, in the uh, 23, here it is the 29. We've already run it all the way up 
uh, when the when the uh, dollar went to 121 and then came back down, UUP stop held and then we ran it all the way up again, taking a little bits off. But look at this, we've done more than a one to one. We've done the Chapman Wave instant restart. We've got the falling axe formation. We've gone above the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone. It's now propellant zone. So it's a little bit overbought visually, but the nine is still over the 14. The price is over the nine. The, um, the 50 period moving average is strong. Uh, you've got the 200 period moving average way down at 20 in the 2835 area. The MACD is pulling back just a little bit, but still positive. Stochastic's flat at 94. There's nothing wrong here. You could still have at least one more pop to the 2950 area. So as I'm putting it together, what I'm saying is <clears throat> whatever the Fed says, the market is kind of ready for a bit of a bounce. But more than a bit of a bounce, it's going to take quite a bit for the market to be convinced that the Fed is done. So I just thought, since this is the time that uh, Tom usually interviews me, I'll just give it a quick summation uh, for subscribers to my opening call. We are short using one of my indicators from the exact high in the Dow on the 1st of August at the 35,679 area. We remain short, and we are short the SMHs, the semiconductors, Two days after the all-time high was made at 117, we're short for just over 159 and remain short. I'll be back in a moment. Basil Chapman sending you for the one and only Tom O'Brien. Tom, I hope you get well very quickly. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019 finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Adding stock options to your portfolio can be a major game changer, but the full complexities of these instruments can oftentimes elude even the most experienced traders. Whether you're a seasoned trader looking to sharpen your knowledge on options or you're completely new to the market, Teddy Kekstat is here to help. On Wednesday, September 27th, from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time, Teddy is hosting a live stream that will teach you how to capitalize on time with calendar stock option spreads. Teddy will also go over how to trade stocks and other market movements without large capital allocation, how to expand portfolio diversification, how to maximize potential returns, basic entry and exit techniques, and more. If that wasn't enough of a reason to attend, Teddy will also be answering all questions live. If you're serious about making money in this market, head over to the front page of TFNN.com today to sign up for Teddy's live stream. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. 
Oh, look, so you can see, there's the, everything I've discussed here, look, the 200-period moving average was a resistance at a peak D in the five-minute chart of the E-mini. This is the E-mini S&P. Here's your starting point. Look at the nice indicators, how they all start to rally very strongly. The nine went positive, stayed positive, even on this dip. So that says that this 200-period moving average of 44.90 becomes a resistance level. Days young. Maybe the market's thinking, hey, the Fed's going to help us out tomorrow. We'll see what happens. We can't predict. We can only predict uh, that the market will respond however it's going to respond to the Fed decision. But even that is a nebulous thing because the Fed can make a decision but it's all the data that comes in on Thursday and then on Friday. But look at this. Uh, look at that sharp move down in the E-mini 10-minute chart from the 200. Look at that 200-period moving average. Resistance, 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 resistance. Boom. Takes, takes off and comes down. Just failed to hit it on the way back up. Now it's kind of holding steady. So all I can say is that we're going to wait and see exactly at 4 o'clock. As 4 o'clock comes along, we'll be able to see I can't see how it's going to do that. Look, for the Dow to now flip green in the nine-period exponential moving average, well, this is a Chapman Wave Roman candle as we're speaking right now, a small one, but a small one, uh, it still has the same characteristic. And what it says is that, uh, let's just say it closes somewhere around here. That this particular candle, and I'll open this up a little bit so you can see it better. This particular candle says if intraday tomorrow for about 60 minutes, I'd say probably a little more than 60 minutes. If the Dow is trading under 34,420, there's a real good chance we're going to test today's low. And that is a low of, if I can find it somewhere over here, that's a low of 34,311. No, that's impossible. Sure. Today did it 34,000. Yeah, whoa, 34,311. Um, didn't feel that way. I was watching it all morning, but uh, mostly focused on the S&P. So now what we're looking at is if there are two closes above the high of the day and so far the high is 34,597. This is just using the Chapman Wave Roman candle as a kind of a guide. If there are two closes above it, then we should start tackling this inside track repellent zone, trying to move back into the 34,800 level. That's the way I'm looking at it. But it's the weekly chart that looks kind of soft. Look, you had this big move up, and now you're going sideways. Even with the nine period over the 14, it says you've got time. It's going to take time to pull back and break down. So as long as it does that, it means that there's still internal strength. The same thing in the S&P. Here we go, S&P. Look at the weekly chart. A little, It's arching over in that pattern that I call the, the lowercase h, but it's holding very nice. Look at this. Um, it went pink, days young. If there's suddenly a big burst of strength, I don't know what it'll take to actually get it to, this S to disappear for it to still be a positive 914. But there's a chance, days young, 20, uh, 27 minutes, anything can happen in 27 minutes. Look at the QQQ, same thing. It's pulled back sharply, got repelled, and here it is with an S on the day. That doesn't mean anything until the close. It's a closing bar, the daily bar. So we have to wait to see if that's confirmed. But look at the weekly chart. Yeah, it's gone sideways for three weeks since the, the four weeks ago with that big green candle, which started this declining trend line. This is a pattern I call the falling X. Look, there's a long line. This is the handle. This is the expanding blade to put it into technical terms. It is an expanding declining cone formation. A lot of words, right? Well, all it says is it's stuck in this range. It could fail by making the H pattern by taking out 360. And right now it's at 369.46, only down $1.21. But it is basically not going up. It's just going sideways. So I want you to show you that if I show you the XLK, which is the, uh, this is the S&P Select tech sector. Look at this big pullback. Uh, it uses falling X formation to break to the upside. Now it's coming down. And that makes this particular line the support line. So right on the support line, the nine for three days has gone negative. Look at the H pattern that's forming. I haven't even been able to put a down arrow yet because I need two, at least two closes underneath this black 14 period moving average. And that, that just gives a sell signal. A sell mode is when that green turns pink, 
with lower lows. Hasn't done that. It made a, it made a new, it made an all-time high. 177.04 was the high in the XLK, uh, December of 2021. This last move went to 181 or 180, uh, 181.46, uh, just a couple of weeks ago, 181.46. Um, these double tops are fantastic. We were talking about one just uh, this morning in my show. Uh, it was mentioned Carvana. Uh, I spoken. I was asked about it about a week or so ago, and I said, "Well, it looks like it wants with the nine period moving so strong. This is automobiles, auto online auto sales that it should try for a leg D." And I drew in all these patterns that I do in the Chapman Wave methodology, the the plumb line. Uh, how you can use the plumb line to gauge the number of bars on the left to equal the number of bars to the same level on the right. And I said 57.19 was the high uh, back in uh, July, and it's pulled back to the 37 area. Now it's rallying very nicely, but it should do that. It should go to a D. What it went to a D where? 56.80. How do these things know that it's just 30, 40 cents away from the previous high? of months ago. So here it is, peak D and it's pulling back. So I do respect these double tops. Look, the SMHs made a slightly high, 161.17. Uh, the last high was 159.42 back in November of 2021. So I'm taking this very seriously, the pullback. Doesn't mean to say, oh my God, now we're going all the way back to the bottom. He just says, this is where you, it, it's kind of vulnerable to test, in this case, the 143 level where it's hit uh, hit that in mid-August, and it also hit it back in uh, June of this past year, 142.98. So these are levels I'm watching very, very closely. And that's why I said that the TLT and the TBT, that's the inverse of the TLT, that's the short bonds, the other one's long the bonds. We've got these levels that we need to... Um, we, these are levels that are notable because they've proved themselves as resistance levels or support levels. And if we take them out, in other words, on the resistance, if you go much above it, that just negates it. Now you're going up even higher. Now, wait a minute. If talking about that, look at the EUR, USD. This is the euro dollar currency pair. Um, it pulled back in this particular pattern, big arch formation. The low that was made, isn't that fascinating? The low that was made back in the beginning of June, I think, or end of May, yeah, on the 31st of May, of 1.0635, what was the low just four sessions ago? 1.0631. I mean, how close can you get when you're talking about July, August, you're talking about two, two over two months, and it's gone all the way to the one point. To five level, and now it's come back down. I do respect these double bottoms and double tops, and that says this is also maybe ready for a turn. Let's look at the USD JPY as we go to the break. Basil Chapman sitting for Tom O'Brien. Yep, there it is at 147.85. The USD JPY is close to a new recovery high. I'll be back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. 
the Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I'm O'Brien. Hi, folks, we're back. Basil Chapman City for Tom O'Brien. Look how the Dow's come back so nicely. It's down 113, SP's down 10. Yeah, yeah, they say you can't keep a good market down, but that's not the point. The point is that there's nothing you can take for granted in this market because um, there are buyers out there. I've been talking about this for a while. And let me just go back to this because I think it's so important. Yeah, but look at that nice rally there in the E-mini. But I've been saying that as I can see it, and I'm going to emphasize this right now before we go to the final break. <clears throat> look at the daily charts. The daily charts are in a different world to the weekly charts of the Dow, daily, Dow, weekly, Dow, monthly. I don't even want to talk about the monthly because the monthlies are still holding very well. Look at the S&P, and that's the reason why I've said I don't want to go just completely to the dark side. I want to have a mix. We've got longs. We've got shorts. I, I, I just don't want to be locked into thinking this way. And look. Look at the S&P, how nicely it rallied over 50% from the 4507 high in July down to the 4335 low in August, and then rallies to 4440s, and now it's at 4444, and it's still, and the day's young because everything's kind of coming back, but it's still got the pink nine-period moving average. That's what, when you heard the recording earlier that they played as we started at Tom's show. Uh, <clears throat> that was me from 9.30 this morning, from 10 o'clock this morning, and I was saying, at this particular time, it's a daily charge. You've got to wait. You can't talk about it until the close. I've seen bars change like that right at the end of the I've seen June monthly charts absolutely horrible. And on the last day, the last two days of June, there's been these spectacular rallies. All of a sudden, June, June closes up. So you, I, I'm just saying that this is still young in the day. And we'll see what happens. Look at the QQQ. Same thing. There's a little bit further to go. Oh, look what it did. The Qs have reversed from being S with the S when I started the show, meaning sell signal in the 914 indicator to disappearing. And look at this. The IWM is still weak. IWM. Let me just look at the NQ. Um, yeah, they're still weak. NQ is the uh, continuous contract. Yep, that's still S. And that, to me, is we'll see what happens tonight because look at this. Now we're only down 90 in the Dow, down 7. I think the markets anticipate. Oh, I wish it wouldn't do that. Anticipating the uh, 
uh, Fed is going to just say something absolutely glorious. I would have preferred if, uh, in fact, whoa, 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 restart now, pick a time, snooze, get out of that Windows update in the middle of the show. That's all I need, right? <laughs> so, okay. So, as I said before, the daily charts were weak. All the monthly charts have held extremely strong. So, I'm looking at, I call it short term, but it's been weeks. But it is the short term time frame. That's the daily. The more intermediate term is the weekly. The monthly charts, something probably we have to wait until the end of the month. So, as I'm talking to you, um, you've only got the S&P down. Look at this. Let's go to the, um, there we go. This is the. The chart that made a peak C in the one-minute chart, remember peak D is your objective in a buy mode in any time frame. So this goes to peak C1, peak C2, and here's your leg D. And I mentioned this in the den earlier on. I said the uh, 4485 area is key support. It went just a little lower, held above the 200 period moving average. And now you've got a chance that you're going to get a leg C at this 44.97.35. Well, 50 cents because it doesn't trade in 35 increments. It's 25 cent increments in the 10-minute uh, chart. Let's see what the five-minute chart's doing. Oh, I have to tell you, that's why the market is so exciting. You just, huh, you never know. And here's your little double top. Well, what's happening is the MACD turned. This is a five-minute chart of the E-mini. It went above the 200 period moving average, pulled back. And what's really fascinating, I was going to talk about this, and I said, ah, let's not waste time. I have a phantom peak in the Chapman Wave methodology right here. This is, this is a triple top. Normally, if I get a double top and there's a little ictus, a little nick in this unbalanced volume or the relative strength, I will call that a peak only even because it travels in 25 cent increments, only because I want to get to this high, not expecting a C going to a D, saying I'm anticipating a D and I can prepare, which is exactly what I did. So I got out and I waited. And then I said, well, that's the alternate count, 200 period moving average and went down. It's made a cup, a beautiful cup formation. Uh, let me see if I can draw this in here. This is live, folks. I'm not making anything up. This is the way it is. I usually find the doji candle at the bottom. I treat that as, if I can, as the fulcrum or the plumb line. So I'm going to go right there. I'll do that. Click. I'll make that a click. Whoops, this is the one, right? Yeah. So it's a little bit late. And I go click, and I'll show you exactly what happens right here. This is the middle one is the five minutes. That's what we're dealing with. And I go to the right side. So this is the exact bar that it needs to test the left side high of 49, 90, was that six, 40, uh, 90, oh, whoops, let me get this right, 45, 96.75. Uh, this is the bar, it's a five minute bar, so it's still traveling up. Now, normally what I would do is I draw in a Chapman Wave inside wedge target resistance line and there it is right there and then i'd make it you don't have to make the colors i just make the colors so that i can demonstrate it live so this is green on the way up dashed green on the way up dashed pink on the way down and there you have it so we'll see if that that works meantime it got very very close it went to 90 i'll tell you what it went to right here it went to 94 90 Sorry, 44.95.25. So far, it's missed it by 50 cents, but it is a peak D in the daily, and that says, well, you've got to be careful, could be pulling back here. On balance volume's a little bit overboard. So isn't that fascinating? All right, let's get back to our story. So now we've got a couple of things that came in. Could I please look at the big seven? Oh, as many as you can. Amazon. Amazon's holding extremely well. When you look at the weekly chart, you've got a potential peak E right here. Look at this, 143.63 was the high in July, and now we've tested it uh, four days ago by going to 146. So we just missed, oh, did I say 146? Oh, sorry, that was the, yeah, 146, but we closed last week below it. So this is potential for maybe a double top, but so far it's holding, look at the nine over the 14, so strong. To get that to weaken, you'd have to see Apple down at the 123 level. Right, that's the first thing. Second thing is, we've just made a peak D, 
That's where other things can happen. That's the objective of a buy mode. And that just says you've pulled back to the falling X support level. Um, nice, not a bad candle today, but uh, we'll see what happens. And the monthly chart, 188 was the high back in July of 2021. 81 was the low uh, back at uh, the beginning of this year. And here it is at 137, kind of in the middle of the range, holding very well. And this is kind of retail, not fully retail because it's Amazon retail. That's something different. I'll be back in a moment. Basil Chapman, this is the Tom O'Brien Show. Dow's down 79. s and is down 7. Whoa, good comeback from earlier on where it was so weak. See you in a few moments. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, so during the break, uh, I was asked about, do I think the uranium stocks are ready for a, a pullback after a spectacular move? So CC, CCJ, uh, uranium... Mm -hmm. Made a peak F in the Chapman Wave methodology. That's where you've got to be somewhat careful. And a huge red candle today. Spectacular move. Just in the last week and a half, going from the 36 level to almost 42. And now it's at 39.16. And it's in a, I've got this. This is an alternate count in the weekly chart. As well, but the monthly chart is also extremely much higher. So, you know, I... The way I'm looking at this is that we are right in the soft spot right now where there's resistance and support in key metrics. 
And what I'm looking at is that, for instance, for subscribers to my opening call, we've got UEC, which is Uranium uh, Corporation, uh, U sorry, Uranium Energy Corporation. Uh, we got it in the th in the 360 um, area. It's screened up to 555. On the way up, we've been taking tads, little tads off. See this little thing, the Chapman Wave? This is that flag formation that I always talk about called the, uh, the uh, this is the uh, breakout that we saw within three sessions. Boom, it breaks out. So it's also an instant restart. But I called it an E. I haven't yet called it an alternative count. See the way on the right, exactly like the Dow, at exactly the moment that's needed, the on-balance volume turned around. Uh, this was a day earlier. The Dow was in exactly on August the 1st, which allowed us to go short that day. So this is what I'm looking at. I think there's a consolidation going to be uh, unfolding here. I think the upside, there's maybe a little bit more room on the upside, but I wouldn't be surprised if this uh, EUC uh, consolidates in CCJ. I think I drew in the, uh, in the, no, I didn't. So I drew, yes, I did. I drew in the rectangle. I said it could go a little bit higher, but I wouldn't be surprised if it pulls back over the coming week because this is, by any metric, it's it's somewhat overbought. So you've got to be a little careful. So with that said, let's just sum it up. As far as I'm concerned, the daily chart of key indices are still doing extremely well, even though they're in cell mode. But the weekly charts haven't shown anything yet to say that they're about to tank. They will tank if they, they drop 3 or 4 percent by the end of the week. They haven't yet. With that said, well,